Hello students, I welcome you to yet another interesting class in history. In our last class, we talked about the spread of Islam in West Africa. Here we talked about the three stages that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa. In today's lesson, you will learn about the reasons that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa. And we shall be discussing seven major reasons that helped in the spread of Islam in West Africa. The first we have here is the nature of Islam. The nature of Islam as a religion accepting polygamy to some extent, its tolerance of traditional African religions, its simplicity of doctrines and mode of worship helped propagators to make converts in Africa. These factors make, made Islam easily adaptable to the African communities with which it came in contact with. Again, the Islamization of Africa was paralleled by the Africanization of Islam, the making and sales of shams and amulets, which were believed to offer protection against evil forces and generally ensure success in life we are important in winning over converts to the Islamic religion. Islam as a religion tolerated, like I've said earlier, it tolerated some of the traditional doctrines of Africa. And thus, when the Islamic religion came in, it was not so hard for the Islamic religion to gain converts in West Africa. I mentioned two factors here. I said the says the making and sales of shams and amulets aided the spread of Islam and also the religion tolerated polygamy as one of its doctrines. That also aided the spread of Islam in West Africa. Another reason that helped in the spread of Islam in West Africa is trade. The Trans-Saharan trade was a good network that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa. From the 7th century onward, Muslim traders from the Maghreb and the Sahara started settling first in some of the market centers in the Sahel and then in the savannah areas. A renowned Arabic scholar and merchant, Al-Bakri, wrote in the year 1067 that the capital of ancient Ghana was already divided into two parts, about six miles apart. The Muslim traders, part of which had as many as 12 mosques, and the king's part had one mosque for the use of the king's Muslim visitors. It was these resident Muslim traders who converted the rulers and the principal local towns to Islam. Also, according to Kanu Chronicles, during the reign of Yaji, the king of Kanu, from 1349 to 1385, the Wangarawa came from Meli bringing Muhammadian religion. These examples grow, grew the processes of Islamization in West Africa. Another activities or another reason that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa was the activities of Muslim clerics. Islam spread in West Africa through the activities of Muslim clerics. These clerics or learned men founded their own religious centers which attracted students from all parts of the western sudan and who on the completion of their studies and trainings went back to their own homes to win converts now many of them went on lecture or missionary tours to convert people to the islamic religion while others became advisors to sudanese kingdoms or kings on how to become effective rulers. 
Some clerics devoted a great deal of their time to writing books and instructions on all aspects of Islam for the education and conversion of people or the purification and strengthening of Islam. Another reason that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa is the activities of rulers. Islam gained momentum in West Africa through the activities of individual rulers. The rulers of the Western Sudanese empires encouraged the trans-Saharan trade and extended hospitality to both traders and visiting clerics. But perhaps one of the most important ways in which they encouraged acceptance of Islam was through their own conversion. With a Muslim king or ruler, it rapidly became a matter of prestige among the aristocracy also to convert to Islam in many kingdoms. Many rulers made considerable efforts to encourage Muslim institutions such as Islamic tasks and legal systems or the provision of facilities such as mosques through the appointment of Muslim officials such as judges and butchers who observe in the Islamic code and to lead prayers. Celebrating Muslim festivals and ordering every town under their control to observe the ritual prayers. The pilgrimages that many of these rulers undertook, such as Mansa Musa and Askia Muhammad, had a considerable spiritual effect, increasing their determination both to strengthen and purify Islam and to spread it even further. Another reason that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa is the Jihad, also known as the Holy War. The militant Jihad waged the Holy War against infidels or lukewarm Muslims. This method allowed the third and final stage of the process of Islamization in Africa to reach the climax with the 19th century Jihad in the Western Sudan. Recall I said in our last class that in the last stage of the spread of Islam in West Africa which was the reforms, fully converted Muslims pushed for reforms to get rid of those lukewarm or infidel Muslims that practiced both the Islamic religion and part of the African traditional religion. They pushed for reforms to purify their societies and get rid of those called lukewarm Muslims. This aided the spread of Islam immensely in West Africa. Next up, we'll talk about intermarriage as a reason that aided the spread of Islam in West Africa. Merchants from North Africa came down to West Africa, settled and married some women from West Africa who became Muslims, including the children that were born into such marriages. That aided the spread of Islam in West Africa because it automatically becomes a plus to the Islamic race. And lastly, we'll talk about we'll talk about scholars, the contributions of scholars to the spread of Islam in West Africa. Some of these Islamic scholars that came in from North Africa opened Islamic schools and colleges. And the products of these schools and colleges also did well by spreading the religion. They worked as advisors and counselors and so on. Now, for instance, Ibn Yasin established a Zinia college and founded the Amoravid movement, which contributed considerably to the spread of Islam in the Sahara and the Western Sudan. Also, one of the greatest clerics and missionaries of Western Sudan was al aj Suwari. The Suninki scholar founded the important Zawinga at Dakia, Bambok, which attracted students from all over the Western Sudan during the first half of the 13th century. 
scholarship was also indeed attractive to to rulers in west africa because the widespread use of the of the arabic script made administering their kingdoms easier and tax revenue easier to collect these scholars opened schools that attracted students from all over western sudan and when such students finished from these schools and colleges they would go back to their hometown and their regions or empires and continue the work of the islamic race that is spreading and preaching the islamic message and converting more people to the islamic religion now with this we have come to the end of our class for today i hope you've learned a lot don't forget to attempt your quiz and also do your assignment as it forms part of your continuous assessments Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye and stay safe.